thank you for joining us. We're excited to have good attendance today to talk about ProLink HFA, um, specifically around Procorum use cases and um, the, how it works as a portal to communicate with our external partners. So we're gonna go ahead and get started here. Today's agenda. So for the first portion, I'm going to go over some general information. Um, I'm then going to pass it to my colleague Ryan to cover Procorum as an external communication portal for about 15 minutes. And then Jim is going to cover our Procorum demo today for about 20 minutes. Um, so if you haven't met me before, I am Bree Kruder. I'm the Executive VP for ProLink Solutions. Um, I'm joined by Ryan Kim, who's our VP of Sales and Marketing, and then Jim Paris is our Sales Engineer. All right, just getting into some general info. Um, for those of you who are long-standing attendees of this webinar series. Thank you for listening to this update and being reminded of how the schedule works every time we do this webinar. Um, the objective of these sessions is to provide an opportunity to share industry trends, hot topics, um, and present them alongside a product demo or some way of solving that, that concern um, based off of the tool set that ProLink has to offer. So generally we have a business presenter involved and a technical presenter involved in these sessions. Um, the schedule, these sessions occur at the first Wednesday of every month until October for ProLink HFA specific content. So in November, we host our ProLink Technology Live Conference, which is a larger conference, usually over a couple of days with many training sessions. So we, we skip November, we take a break in December, and then we'll re reconvene and start the sessions again um, the following January. And they're about 45 minutes in length. Um, again, these sessions are geared to speak to our housing agencies nationally. So we have clients attending, a lot of clients attending these sessions. We also have um, non-client agencies attending these sessions as well. So it really does provide us an opportunity as a technology vendor where we don't generally have a great um, sort of venue uh, uh, that's really specific to technology for affordable housing, this provides a space for us to really focus on that. And we appreciate that opportunity. Um, thank you guys for continuing to attend these sessions and, and provide feedback to us so that we continue to make them worth your time. And then for our next webinar, which I will cover some more details about towards the end of this session, we have our June uh, topic, which will be data views. It's a data views refresher. So I'll get into that in more detail after we cover the topics today. Quickly going over our about ProLink solution. So again, for those of you who may not be existing clients of ours, we um, or new to your agencies, we've been in business for 23-ish um, years now, serving the affordable housing industry across many different constituents. So we support um, both state and local housing finance agencies, tax credit syndicators and investors and developers with our tool set. Uh, we have multiple different pro products and our goal really is to support all the constituents in affordable housing. That's been the goal since the very beginning um, by Sean McKenna, our CEO, president, founder. Um, our work. So we are really driven by providing tools that are holistic. So they support your needs from the origination stage, that application stage, whatever you know piece it in the case of ProLink HFA, it's really that origination deal stage all the way through your compliance and asset management um, activities and then into your audit. Um, so that is the way our system is, is built is to handle that from end to end. And then also as much as we can connect the parties together and uh, provide opportunities to source information from the same places. So we're not doing repeating the same activities um, too many different times. That's our goal. That's what we try to work towards with every product enhancement we build into our tools. Certainly the goal with Procorum is a collaboration portal that we use. Finally, our team, we're made up of technologists um, and industry experts. We have a lot of people who've been with us for a long time focusing in this area. Um, we work with as many outside um, kind of team members and advisors in the industry to make sure that we're really experts in this field and can support our clients um, to the best of our ability. 
quickly, here's a list of our customers by product. So if you if you need a refresher on your neighbors who are with you on ProLink HFA, here you go. Um, this is our list of of um, agencies. We have Maine Housing and Rhode Island Housing going under implementation right now, so they're not yet in production. Um, the rest are live and in production and um, have been for some time now. I think California DDS is our latest in production client, which just happened recently, so congratulations to them. Uh, we also have our AIM product, ProLink AIM and FHA, which are those investor and syndicator clients mentioned. And then finally, ProLink HHF and ProLink Plus, which is our emergency fund deployment, um, currently supporting the HALF program um, with a couple of clients there. And then lastly, just demonstrating our reach across the nation here. I always say we're almost connected from coast to coast. Um, we're representing 16 housing finance agencies and two supportive services agencies across the United States who are on ProLink HFA. Okay, and then just before we begin our session, really focusing in on Procorum, um, sometimes that bird's eye high level overview helps even the people who've worked in Procorum um, for years, it, you know, just refreshing us as to what the intention of our tool set is and how they're meant to work together. So you can see we have ProLink HFA represented on the left and that's, that's our database system. That's where we do our work every day. That's the sole source of record um, where our clean data remains. It's where we export our reporting to HUD, um, to NCSHA, all of those things. And then we use Procorum as that collaboration portal. Um, it can get messy in there. It's a deal room at certain stages and then it turns into our place where we um, gather our asset management and um, our, kind of our compliance requirements, our tenant events, all of those things start to come into Procorum and it's a way to communicate directly with those external parties in a secure uh, manner in a controlled format and then uh, make sure that things are getting done with, with your touch involved with those partners, but hopefully a little more automated for you, a little less time consuming for you. And then finally, we have Smart Docs, which is kind of the, the sauce between those two platforms. We have HFA and Procorum. We want to get information out of Procorum into HFA and vice versa. And Smart Docs is an Excel and, and Word add-in tool that allows that to happen. So it's trying to minimize data entry uh, manual process with that export and import functionality using Smart Docs. Okay, final slide for me is just, again, a little bit high level, but considering, you know, how you may be using Procorum today compared to its intended use and, and the opportunities that might still remain for you, um, this is just the picture of all the different modules we have available to us through ProLink HFA. So you can see we have our multifamily development and bond financing module. We actually included kind of our tax credit allocation module within that group. Um, we have our single family development, which includes REO. And then we have our asset management and compliance module, um, also including our supportive services functionality. So there's, uh, Ryan's gonna go over the many different use cases that we have surveyed across our clients and the ways that they're using Procorum to support these different interests that they're tracking through ProLink HFA. Um, so these are the main functional modules within your backend database within ProLink HFA. And then over the course of time, we've seen um, Procorum really evolve in the way that our clients are, are using it to their benefit. So um, we started in you know, managing deals at that origination stage and providing that deal room kind of experience. And um, then we added in tenant compliance in that we've built in apps to help with um, a lot of different kind of stages within the deal. And now we have so many different use cases that are just continuing to evolve with our clients. So um, keep these different modules in mind and, and know that we're here to work with you, to support you and consult with you in the best um, adoption and use of Procorum as possible. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to Ryan. Right, thank you, Bree. Let me share my screen. Here you go. Um, well, thanks everyone for attending the webinar today. Uh, we are here to talk about Procorum as a platform 
to communicate with your external customers digitally. Um, but I would like to start the presentation really at a high level with a 30,000 foot view. Uh, the economy has moved away some significant ways in recent years from the traditional paper-based business processes to where we are right now, which is more and more digitized and connected world we're living in. And a lot of leading organizations today are asking, uh, taking digital transformation as number one top priority in their list of their corporate initiatives. So the question they are asking themselves right now, which is listed here, actually I started from second slide. So going back, this is the first question they ask themselves. How do we break technology and data silos and free of access to data across the organization? That's called democratizing data. And the follow-up question is then, how do we use that dem democratized data to drive the organizational productivity and profits? So this sounds pretty big and audacious uh, to us right now, but like everything else, it starts with the taking a baby step. So the baby step we're here to discuss today is the digital communication with your external customers using a web portal and workflow tools such as Procorum uh, to really help you move from the traditional way of collecting information from your customers, such as paper, binders, uh, thumb drives, emails, to a digital platform. And I'm sure a lot of agency staff today, as well as customer, your customers, can testify to a lot of benefits that came with such transition. So going a little too fast. So I'm summarizing the benefits of that transformation using the digital communication platform. Uh, it comes with easiness and efficiency. So your partners don't have to create, uh, you know, three sets of binders for applications, you know, drive to your office and physically drop off those binders to you anymore. And as a bonus, we get to save trees and you know, make positive impact on the environment. Security and safety. When you are on a digital platform, are you less likely to lose stuff and info important information that might be contained in those stuff? Um, so there's a safety and security there. Transparency. Uh, it provides owners with peace of mind. Um, you know, once they hit the upload button and the application has been submitted, there are no questions about it. Everyone can see that it has been done. And finally, organizations and controls. As an agency, you can uh, keep information and all the activities uh, more organized, better organized, and enforce deadlines more easily and send notifications and reminders easily on the digital platform. So delivering all these benefits, Procorum uh, shines in a few ways. Uh, we, all your data in Procorum is stored in Amazon Web Service uh, Data Warehouse. So there is a, that security and safety for you. And unlike many other mainstream tools, such as Google, uh, Google Drive, uh, Box.com, Dropbox, you know, Teams, uh, Procorum has been designed in a way to support affordable housing organizations uh, and has functionalities tailored to support uh, your needs across the life cycle of your housing investments. So I reviewed some of the, our state HFA customers today, how they're using Procorum today, and kind of summarizing my findings here from the, um, uh, by going through the Procorum feature itself. So starting with the work center, it all starts from creating a work center. All state customers use work center as a hub to collect data on a piece of property or a single funding application. And using Work Center, uh, you can control who has access to data and who doesn't. Um, by inviting certain people as collaborator to the Work Center. So Work Center is a critical building block as you design workflows on Procorum. Going into files, data collection from owners and agents is the main use of Procorum for sure. 
This is done based on standardizing a set of uh, folders and then giving clear instruction to your housing partners where and how to upload those files. So the location of right folder is very important aspect to just keep things organized for you. And uh, in terms of organization, some states will go extra mile to um, come up with naming conventions and enforce that so that when the owner and agents are uploading the file, uh, they will upload it upload the file to the not only to the right location, but actually with the right uh, name com naming convention. So just a way of keeping things organized in Procorum. Those are the best practices I have observed um, from our state customers today. Uh, there's a common feature built into files feature in Procorum. Uh, some states will encourage owners and agents to document you know, any sort of comments in that comment feature as they upload a file. Uh, vice versa, the other way around, states will also upload files to Procorum and that's as a way of publishing or sharing you know, applications, forms, you know, documents, uh, templates, or even instructions, uh, publish them to your housing partners so they can download and use those documents. So those are some common uses of the file features in Procorum. Now we're moving on to task. Task is a very well utilized workflow tool used by a lot of states. Uh, they create this standardized set of tasks and which becomes um, clearly defined set of steps to accomplish, accomplish uh, the big uh, um, whole workflow. So, you know, as you go, marking off each task uh, as done uh, is a great way to tracking, you know, showing progress you're making on that uh, workflow. So those are the, that's the task functionality. And now I'm going to jump into the email notifications. Uh, Procorum email notifications tend to flood uh, people's inbox quite a bit. Uh, we've heard that. Uh, but it is still seen as a highly valuable uh, way to track activity level uh, within the work center. Uh, most importantly, it is a way of uh, it is used as a way of reminding um, the deadline for certain tasks or past due tasks. And then finally, post. Uh, there are a number of ways to use posts, uh, but one way to use posts is to let people know about any corrections or missing information on their data submission. Um, the other way is to make an official announcement about uh, starting a new round of funding. So those are some use cases I have seen uh, on Procorum. And then now I'm gonna summarize those four main use cases from the kind of the business point of view. Um, it's all start with NOFA. So notice uh, funding availability, Oregon, Florida housing and Colorado housing use Procorum for NOFA. So they will make an announcement of the, you know, the new funding round on Procorum. Uh, they will publish uh, applications and templates on Pro Procorum and then eventually collect all the completed applications from the, your housing partners on Procorum. Uh, in particular, in Oregon's case, they differentiate between pre-application and full application. And the earlier steps during the uh, pre-application stage are done uh, through the agency's website and the admin email. But eventually, they will move all the activities into Procorum as they receive their pre-applications uh, through email. Uh, the next one is asset management and compliance stage uh, that heavily utilized for that in Procorum. Uh, a lot of recurring asset management activities such as collecting property level financials is, are done in Procorum. Um, in particular, many states use uh, Procorum's compliance app, uh, which, is, uh, uh, which is our uh, Procorum app to take in tenant compliance data in the format of XML from the property management's uh, accounting software 
YARD real page, MRI, all those uh, software spit out this data export in XML format. And Procorum has the you know, application to take those uh, XML data and process them and push into Prolink HFA database. Um, we, Procorum is actually used as a digital forum for the NAMAS XML standard, uh, standard, standard group, uh, which is an industry group um, alongside NAMA uh, who provide, uh, they meet regularly like twice a year and discuss any changes uh, for the changes in the XML um, standard. So uh, Procorum is used for that. And Prolink has been you know, participating in that uh, the group uh, activity uh, in the recent years. Moving on to Kansas. So Kansas uses Procorum for Section 8 file management, uh, which includes publishing and collecting various Section 8 contract requirements, such as rent adjustment, special claims, and utility allowances. They use Procorum with their housing partners who are in their uh, PBCA performance-based contract administration program. And the last use case is the construction budget app. So Procorum has a budget, budget app. It's used by Virginia Housing and Idaho Housing. Um, you can create your construction budget on Procorum and publish to your general contractor uh, or construction managers for them to um, make uh, you know, update on the construction progress and make those monthly uh, draw requests through Procorum and you can approve and fund those, you know, the monthly draw uh, requested amount. So those are all done on Procorum platform as well. So this is my last slide uh, before we go into actual demo of Procorum by Jim Paris, but I like to sum up that my observation from just looking at state's practices of using Procorum today is that Procorum is a flexible tool uh, that business, use, uh, business units can take ownership without the IT's involvement to create a set of workflow and deploy to the public, your housing partners, um, yourself without much help from either Prolink Solutions or your IT um, department. And to be successful in deploying Procorum, it requires some level of creativity to design your workflows that make sense to the business unit and your will and resolve to execute and enforce by providing training, providing clear instructions, you know, webinars about how to use Procorum to your external um, housing partners. It is a tool uh, at your disposal and we call this digital ownership. We want you to take advantage of Procorum. Think of a different ways to use Procorum to help your day-to-day -day activities and share those ideas with us. Uh, to be honest, Procorum has been used by our state customers in a way that, in ways that we never imagined initially. And for that reason, Procorum is definitely one of our top priorities at Prolink Solutions uh, to invest in, uh, in the upcoming years. And we are committed to continue supporting our customers to keep growing Procorum in new ways to help your business. So please keep providing your feedback and let's keep our dialogue. So now I'll turn it over to Jim Paris, who is our sales engineer to do a demonstration of Procorum. Awesome, thank you, Ryan, thank you. Let me share my screen here. Can everybody see my screen here? It says Procorum. All right, yep. awesome, awesome. Um, so today I'm, I'm primarily gonna be focusing on tasks and task management. Um, however, I do know there's at least a couple people here who might not be uh, incredibly familiar with um, the Procorum platform. So I'll just take you through uh, a little bit of a basic run through, basic overview of how Procorum is set up first. Um, so when I log into Procorum, um, what we have set up in Procorum are called work centers. So if you have um, a property you're managing um, uh, as an existing kind of property, um, you can have them set up in an asset management portfolio. 
um, or if you have any development deals going on, you can categorize them as such as well. Um, but each of your deals um, or each of your assets um, would have their own work center. Um, you can click into this work center And each of these work centers will have a uh, file section um, where you can put things in folders and subfolders, um, however you feel fit to categorize them. So you can go into 2022 and um, I have all these subfolders that are related to asset management under them. Um, pretty straightforward on how that's set up. Then you have posts. So this is almost like a social media wall um, pertaining to this particular work center. Um, people can, can comment and reply to each other etc. Then you can set up tasks for the specific work center as well and categorize them appropriately too. You keep a calendar going for this work center um, and then you can have um, an activity feed view um, basically logs every action that was made on the work center. Um, so pretty straightforward how each work center is set up and then you can go ahead and choose um, which work centers to add um, which external parties to uh, as collaborators over here. So if I wanted to add uh, maybe somebody from the property management company um, to this work center, I can start typing in their information here. Um, but that's basically how um, work centers in Procorum are set up. I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on that for the people who might not be uh, as familiar with Procorum. Um, but today, again, as I mentioned, I'm going to be focusing on task management. Um, first, I'm going to start out with um, uh, task management from the perspective of somebody who is more of a, 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 a frontline employee um, who's going in and completing tasks, not necessarily um, creating a task and assigning it to other people. So if I'm somebody who's logging in to see what work I have to do for the day, uh, it's pretty, pretty straightforward for me to do so. I can go back to my homepage. Um, one way I can do this is I can go to my tasks under my homepage. Um, or um, I can go over to um, my ABC development account here and go to account tasks. Uh, and then I can go ahead and filter by user. Let's say I'm Rachel Wilson. I want to filter this by assignee because I'm looking at what it is that I need to get done today or in the next few days. Um, so I'm going to uncheck those boxes. Um, and then I'm going to filter it by, let's say, overdue and coming soon. So here, I have this report, it lists out all the tasks that are assigned to me that um, are either overdue or coming up soon. And I can almost treat this as uh, like my work queue for the day. Um, pretty straightforward in terms of uh, how you can run those filters and, and, and pull up the work that you need to get done um, as somebody who's just going in there and, and doing tasks, not necessarily creating tasks for other people. Um, now for somebody who is more in a management position or somebody who's um, opening up new development deals in Procorum or uh, adding in new assets that you're going to have to manage um, in the Procorum platform. Um, there's a few more things you can do in terms of creating these tasks, creating templates, um, as well as monitoring uh, the status of tasks that you've assigned out to other people. Um, so first, uh, I'm going to go to ABC development here, um, and I'm going to go to a specific work center. So if I'm in a situation where I want to um, create a single um, kind of one-off task for somebody, um, let's say, um, you know, I want to get updated financials from the guarantor on the property um, or something like that, uh, I can go in here and I can create uh, a task um, on this work center by creating this, by clicking this plus button. Then I can enter in the title, get financials, from let's say Jim Getty is my guarantor. Um, I can actually um, assign this to a task grouping. Um, I can create a new grouping as well. Um, whenever I see fit, I'm gonna put it under financials, of course. Um, and I'm gonna make the start date, let's say today, and it's due a week from today. And I can assign it to somebody who is set up in the system uh, under a role. So I don't have to look up, hey, who is the asset manager on this property? Um, they can already be set up that way um, in the system, or I can start typing in an individual person like uh, Rachel Wilson or Jim Paris. And let's say I want somebody to follow this. So let's say, um, you know, Rachel Wilson wants to follow the status of this. Um, she can be added as a follower as well. 
I click save. And that task is added in there. I can add a few special things to this as well. So let's say the person that I'm assigning this to is maybe an external partner instead of an internal employee who's not um, working in Procorum uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, maybe I want to add more reminders. Um, so let's say I want to add another reminder three days before it's due um, and have a reminder sent out via email to uh, the assignee. Uh, I can set that up. I can set as many reminders as I want or as few as I want. Uh, another thing I'll highlight here is I can um, add files. So let's say I'm telling them to get financial information from this guarantor and I want in a specific format. I can actually upload a template or a blank version of what I want them to fill out um, here in the file section. Um, so next, uh, what I'll show you here is, um, let's say you have, you're of course going to have a chain of tasks, um, a chain of things that need to get done uh, for a development deal or um, while you're managing uh, an asset. Um, instead of having to go in and create all those tasks individually one by one, you can actually create work centers uh, as templates. Um, as you can see here, I have a few templates set up, um, but I'll go ahead and create a new work center as a template just to kind of show you what that process looks like. Um, so I'm gonna type in, let's say, my general um, generic asset management template. I'm gonna categorize it as a template, of course. I'm gonna click save. Um, I can upload files or create folders um, that relate to this template. So say I wanna um, create folders that say financials, inspections, insurance, et cetera, for asset management, I can do that here. So when I make a new asset management deal, it gets copied and it's kind of uh, laid out uh, like this template is. Um, I can add tasks right here. Um, and then I can create my task groupings if I would like. Um, by typing them in here as well. Um, so pretty straightforward. You're just creating a new work center, but you're labeling it a template. Um, and then when I complete a template, uh, it'll look something like this uh, template deal work center, where I have um, some folders set up in relation to what I would want for a development deal. And then I have um, tasks that are grouped um, for the development process as well. And what I can do is when I go to create a new work center, let's say I have a new property, let's say General Avenue Apartments is a new development deal that I'm working on, um, development pipeline. I can actually choose my template over here um, and to make sure I can import the files and folders and the tasks. Um, if I want to use the same collaborators, so if I have the same external partners working on this one um, as I do on my others, I can click that as well. I hit save. And now I have my General Avenue uh, Apartments Work Center that is um, displayed um, pretty much mirroring um, that template um, that is in my template uh, work centers. And it has all the tasks um, that have been made in that template work center as well. So I do not have to recreate them one by one um, every single time I open up a new deal or start managing a new asset. Now, let's say I'm one of those people who is assigning these tasks to other people. Um, I'm delegating this work to other people, but I do wanna keep track of hey, what's going on? Are these tasks getting completed? Is there overdue stuff? Do we need to follow up with people? Or is everything going smoothly? Uh, what I can do is I can go back to this account tasks uh, section and I can go ahead, I, I'll filter by user. I can filter by user if I want um, and then click as creator and then overdue and coming soon as well. I can apply that filter. And now I have a list of um, all the tasks that are overdue and coming up soon that have not been completed yet. So I can go in here, look at things. Um, is there something important that is overdue? Uh, and then I can go ahead and I can follow up the appropriate people to make sure, hey, why is this task not getting done? Can we please get things moving? Um, as far as use cases for 
um, these work centers, as I mentioned before, um, you can create these different categories for, you know, your asset man management portfolio or your development pipeline. Um, you are not limited to these two categories. You can, you know, set up different categories for different types of asset, your assets you're managing or um, different types of uh, development deals. So you can have as many categories as you'd like. Uh, for demonstration purposes, we just created a generic asset management portfolio um, work center type and a development um, pipeline work center type. So for my asset management, I have General Avenue Apartments. And as you can see, I have my file set up, application, underwriting, construction details, draw requests, things that are related to asset management, um, as well as tasks that are related to asset management. Um, so it can, can get pretty specific um, and um, catered to um, what type of project you're working on. My development part pipeline here as well, I can go to, let's go to Greenwood Village. And that, as you can see here, I have stuff that's more related to a development pipeline. And same with tasks. Uh, as far as um, I, I wanted to touch on uh, managing collaborators a little bit, one thing I will mention to you guys is if you have external um, partners that you're inviting to some of these work centers, one thing I will mention is the layout, the UI is going to be basically the same for these external partners that you're inviting into the work centers. Um, the only exception is they won't be able to see all of your work centers unless of course they're invited to all of your work centers. Um, they might see one or two under asset management portfolio depending on what you invited them to. Um, so it's gonna limit their access to certain work centers based on um, which ones they're, they're added to as collaborators, but um, the overall layout, how it looks, how they navigate the system is going to be identical to how you would as um, an, an internal staff member. Uh, another thing that I'll touch on here, um, some of our clients utilize this because um, some of our clients want um, some files and some information related to a project um, to be uh, confidential and kept internal to their organization and not shared with external parties. Um, so what you can actually do is you can create uh, a separate work center um, where you keep all of that confidential information. So I could have something like uh, my garden court apartments deal here. Um, and then um, I could have a garden court apartments confidential work center as well. And then I could link those two and only invite my collaborators to the regular non-confidential deal, but both of the work centers will be kind of linked together. Um, so you have all that information kind of in the same place, but you're restricting access to some of it um, for confidentiality purposes. And then the last thing I'll show you guys before uh, I pass it off to Bree to close things out is I will go to uh, our help section. And pretty much anything and everything that you can think of doing in Procorum, um, there's a step-by-step -step guide to in our help section. So I'm just gonna type in work center templates um, and go to creating a work center. And you have a pretty detailed step-by-step -step guide to um, how to do anything in Procorum, including creating a work center. As you can see, there's instructions, screenshots, et cetera. So I'll pass things off back to Bree here. Um, and thanks guys for, uh, for listening and joining. Okay, thank you guys very much. Um, thanks, Jim. Thanks, Ryan. Okay, so just quick to follow up here at the end of this session is um, making sure that we are planned and scheduled for our next session. So um, the next topic that we will have on Wednesday, June 1st at 3 p.m. Eastern time for the ProLink HFA webinar series is going to cover data views. Um, it's a data views refresher 
For those of you less familiar with what data views are, um, it's really our ad hoc reporting functionality in ProLink HFA. So we're going to go over how to utilize those um, and really these, these few bullet points you see, how to fulfill the NCSHA reporting requirements using data views, which is how a lot of our clients will utilize it, um, applications for funding status tracking and financials annual submission status tracking are the three areas of focus there. Um, data views are used in many different ways. Again, it's our ad hoc reporting tool um, and, and manipulated in a lot of different ways by our clients to provide the reporting that they need both internally and externally. So we look forward to covering those topics with you on Wednesday, June 1. Um, and with that, I think we're wrapped up. Again, any q and I didn't see too many questions come through the chat. It looks like none. Um, and it looks like Sam did just post the Zoom registration link for this next session. So please make sure you do that while you have a minute. Um, we will follow up with the recording from this session. Um, any Q&A that is submitted to us, we will follow up with. And we look forward to meeting you next time. So thank you very much. Have a great rest of your week.